If you have a forecasting problem, either a moving average or a exponential smoothing forecasting problem, you may be tasked with finding the best answer for either the number of months to average or the alpha value to use. I want to show you how to do that. It's really an optimization problem and we're going to use Excel's built-in solver. In this example, it's the Dow Jones Industrial Average and we're using exponential smoothing. We're given the input data. We've got 20 periods, the actual value of the Dow Jones for those 20 periods. And initially, I solved this using an alpha of 0.3. And I set up the table, which you've done before. The first sale, of course, is just a carryover from the actual first period. I'm going to click on the second cell and show you the formula that we're using. And it's equal to the preceding period, E337, plus the smoothing factor, alpha, down here, 0.3, and that's set absolute by using the F4 function, multiplied times the difference in the actual for the preceding period minus the forecast for the preceding period. That's pretty straightforward. And of course, we just copy that formula down to get that uh, 20 periods forecast. The error, you already know how to do. That's just the actual minus the forecast absolute value of that. Again, we're setting up the formulas in here so that everything can be recalculated. There's our formula, the actual minus the forecast. Squared error. Again, it's just that value of the error raised to the second power. And then the absolute error is equal to the absolute value of the error divided by the actual and that gives you the absolute percent. Okay, once we have that basic table constructed, we can calculate the MAD, the mean square error, and the MAPE. And those formulas you should know. That's just the average of the absolute error for the MAD for the mean square error it's the average again of those squared errors and the MAPE is again just the average of those absolute percent errors. Okay so we have our table and what we want to do is optimize it. We want to try a number of different values of alpha and pick the optimum value. And to do this, I'm going to show you how to optimize for the MAPE. We want to minimize that percent to get the best forecast. Okay, I'm going to go up here and show the ribbon. I had that hidden. And we will go to data, solver, and then we open up this solver dialog table. The objective, I've already got it in here, but what we would do is just click in that objective, go down here to the MAPE, and say I want to minimize, click on minimize, the value in that objective. The next thing we need to do is select the variable that we're going to, to change, and this is our alpha, which is over here at C358, and I'll just show you again. Click in there, click on alpha, and now I've got those two values. I want to minimize the MAPE value in that cell by changing the values 
in this cell. And to do that, we've got to set some constraints because the model needs to know um, how to limit the number of, of values of alpha that we try. And so I set it up that I want the alpha to be greater than to equal to zero and less than to equal to one, since that's the value of alpha's limits, zero and one. And I'm going to show you how to add those. Um, you can either type in a cell reference. In this case, I'm going to go over here and click on alpha again. And I've got the less than or equal. That means I want it to be less than or equal. And I can just type in one and click OK. You can see that it added that constraint. I'm going to delete that one. Don't need it. And similarly, I'm going to go ahead and click on the cell reference, which is alpha. greater than or equal and this time we want zero and we'll just click OK. We've got our two real constraints. We want alpha to be less than or equal to one greater than or equal to zero and I'm just going to leave it set as nonlinear and leave the default and just click solve and it tells me it's converged to a solution I want to keep the solver solution, click OK. And it's given me an alpha of 0 0.8076 or 0 0.81 as the optimum alpha to minimize the MAPE at 0.51%. Now you could rerun this again uh, to minimize for the MAD or the mean square error. Um, but usually if you minimize for the MAPE, you'll get the uh, the correct answer. You would do a similar thing if you were using the moving average type of forecast. So I hope, I hope this is helpful.